Good stuff. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, really good to uh, gather this morning. Great to see uh, your shining faces across the uh, waves. Computer waves. Sorry, I've got my mind's you know gone on down a weird track there. Right, uh, it's church. We're here this morning. The body of Christ uh, gathered together as we were praying this morning. We uh, just felt God speaking about us being uh, together with Jesus this morning. Uh, we have this picture of being the body of Christ and uh, at the head of that body is Jesus Christ. And the body, you know, if we think about a human body, a body can't gather without a head. It's, that's not, uh, uh, yeah. not possible. <laughs> and so this morning we are gathering with Jesus at at the head we are gathering uh, together around Jesus this morning Jesus is with us his presence is with us and uh, we are well we're grateful for that <laughs> we're grateful that Jesus is meeting with us this morning mm. what a uh, what a gift that is mm. um, when when we talk about God's presence I think I've said this before but I'm going to say it again when we talk about God's presence uh, it can sometimes feel a bit sort of uh, airy and and intangible, doesn't count it. But uh, when we when we talk about sort of feeling someone's presence, a, a person's presence, it's because there's there's a person there, and and the reason we can feel God's presence or know God's presence is because there's a person, <laughs> there is a person, uh, you know, Jesus, God, Father, God, Holy Spirit is is here with us, and so we can. Uh, we can sense his presence because the person of Father God, the person of Jesus Christ and the person of Holy Spirit is with us. And I think that perhaps changes the way we think, <laughs> that changes the way we worship. It changes, uh, changes things when Jesus Christ, when we think about him being in the room with us. And so as we as we dive into worship this morning, as we uh, look to him, as we focus our hearts and our voices and our uh, actions towards him, our Father God, uh, Jesus, our Saviour, Holy Spirit, our helper, it changes things. So I just want us to start, uh, just before we sing, I'd like us to stand up. Uh, can I ask everyone to stand up? Just think maybe doing something active might just uh, get us uh, shifted into a new gear as we get started. So uh, let's just stand up and let's just wait on the Holy Spirit. Wait on the Lord for a moment before we start. Let's, let's ask God, let's ask Holy Spirit to just come now into our, into our homes, into our hearts. Uh, a, a deepening of his presence just now. Father God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we thank you that your presence is with us. We thank you that actually you live inside us. Your presence is with us always. But this morning as we gather as the body of Christ, we just want to invite Holy Spirit, would you come in a deeper way just now? Jesus, would your presence be closer would we sense you even more would we recognize something of you this morning gathered the body with the head Jesus we thank you that you do that we thank you that we when we when we pray you hear when we ask for things in your name you answer thank you Lord this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place And you would bear my cross You would lay down your life that I would be set free Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me
breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory. King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. And you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings Hey, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place you would bear my cross you would lay down your life that i would be set free jesus i sing for all that you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place and you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life that I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave thank you lord clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down, 
every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring in power and fighting our battles Every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gate. Make way before the King of Kings. Welcome you this morning, the God who comes to save. Is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. coming on the clouds. It's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. His broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Up the gate, make way before the King of Kings. Open up the gate, the God who comes to say, is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power. Fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. stop the Lord Almighty? Who can 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 stop the Lord Almighty? Yeah. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in 
power and fighting our battles every knee will bow before our God is the Lamb the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world His blood breaks the chain every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Yeah. And we take our place before you this morning as well and we bow before you this morning our God and our King the Lion and the Lamb we bow our hearts before you we as it were pledge our allegiance to you the Lord our King we don't let any other Get in the way. Wholehearted for you, Jesus. Undivided love for you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that uh, when you went to heaven, you went as a, you went to occupy a throne and. Uh, when John looked, he saw a lion. He saw a, a lamb that had been slain. He saw a picture of you having given your life away. He saw a picture of you having uh, allowed your your blood to be shed, uh, Lord, that we might have access to heaven. We might have access to you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You rule from a throne, but Lord, you rule as a lamb as well, one who's given the way his life, one who understands what it is to serve. Lord, we thank you. We love you. Lost across 
come bow before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess that He is Lord. Lift up a shout. Let us join with all of heaven, singing, Oh. Before the King of Kings, let every heart confess that He is Lord. Let up a shout, let us join with all of heaven singing, Holy. Here we singing, Holy. You are holy, holy, holy. that he is Lord lift up your shout let us join with all of heaven singing holy singing holy we're singing holy we declare that you are holy Jesus, that you are with us. 
Jesus, of what we have done in that song and in our worship this morning is declare things that are true about you. And they're not true because we say they are. They're true because they are truths <laughs> that you have set in place, Father God. But in singing those, thing, those truths out, we are singing them to our, our souls and our hearts and we're making them true for ourselves. We're, we're singing truth into ourselves. We're singing truth into our foundations. And uh, so as you, as you declare, as you sing, all hail King Jesus, you are, you are <laughs> calling your soul, you're calling your heart to put him in his right place, in the place where he is already. You are putting him first in your heart. You're giving your whole heart to him. You're pledging your allegiance to our King of Kings, the King of Kings. He's not a King of Kings. He's the King of Kings. There is truth <laughs> yeah, that he is the Lion and the Lamb. And, and this morning we've, we've declared that, we've sung that, which is truth, an eternal truth. But we're singing that to ourselves. We're saying, yes, I, can, I'm see, I want to see you. We're prophetically singing that. We're saying we want to see you, Jesus, as the lion and the lamb. We want to see you as our king, as our Lord. We want to see you coming on the clouds. God, would you, would you help us to do that? Holy Spirit, would you come and help us to do that as we, as we move through uh, this series in, in looking at you, the king, as we, as, we look at, uh, as we look at our king and his kingdom. Help us to see with new eyes what it is that you're, you're opening up to us. Thank you, Father God. King of kings, Lord of lords, we bow our knee to you. Just want to give opportunity uh, uh, for uh, others to share. If you feel like you want to just pray off the back of our worship there, or if uh, you feel like God's been speaking as he's in the room there with you, as if, if he's been speaking to you uh, something to share with uh, the rest of the body, then we would love to hear that. And so uh, just take opportunity to, to do that now. Uh, there was a few things that came out in our prayer time uh, this morning, so p please feel free to share those things as well, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Aggie. Yeah. Hi. Um, as we were praying this morning, I just felt God was reminding us of the prophetic word that John brought uh, about taking our eyes off from our feet and looking to the horizon. I just felt that God wanted to add to that word um, in, in a way that he's speaking and saying to us, there's a new day dawning. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever looked first thing in the morning, you can see the sunrise and it's, it's just beautiful in the sky. And I just felt this morning while we were praying that God wanted to emphasize that to us this morning, that there is a new day dawning and there's, each day comes with blessings. Each day comes with different things. And, you know, there's a somewhere in the Bible where God says, behold, I am doing a new thing. And I felt God wanted to let us know that he is doing a new thing and there is a new day dawning. So let's just uh, take our eyes off from the from the ground, from our feet and, and, and look to that horizon, look to that new day, that new day that, that is dawning, that, that God is bringing. Um, yeah, so Father, thank you that although the world seems to be in chaos, your mercies are new for us each morning. Thank you for the new day that you are dawning. Father God, we just fix our eyes on you, fix our eyes on the horizon, look to the hills where our help comes from, to see you, God, where you are seated high above every name that is named in this age and in the age to come. And we look forward to that new day, Lord, that you're dawning. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Edie, do you want to share? Uh, yeah, I was just um, giving anyone else any opportunity. Yeah. Um, but anyway, if you do want to just say something after me. Uh, it was just a, pic a picture I had earlier when we were meeting to pray, a stained glass window. And I just felt God um, really saying that you know, that's it's lovely to look on a stained glass window. And they're, they're nearly always beautiful and beautifully done and very skillfully done. But, it, you know, they're not real. They're basically coloured glass. <laughs> and it was just a sense of God really reminding us, which is, you know, we all know, I'm sure, and it's sort of basic, but just saying afresh that he is real and he is alive mm. and he does speak yes. and he acts and he's all powerful and so many other things that we haven't got time to, well, we, we probably wouldn't be able to do it if we'd spent all day thinking <laughs> of all the things God is, but just particularly that he does speak and he's alive and real and actually he isn't a sort of stained glass window because that has no power. It's just an inanimate object attractive as it is and just felt God wanted to really remind us and emphasize that he's a living being a living person and he dwells with us he is God Emmanuel mm. he is alive and he speaks and if we're tempted to sort of see him in a kind of stained glass window way of just something that looks lovely to look at and it's comforting or attractive and, but isn't actually we're not allowing his power or his him to speak into our lives and to just remember afresh that he speaks and ask him to speak and to work in your lives and in other people's lives as well. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> right, we are going to move on uh, into um, hearing from Dave Richards. So Dave uh, came a few weeks ago and we were really blessed by him launching us into this new series and he was talking about this upgrade of the kingdom that uh, the way of the kingdom is like an upgrade from economy class to first class uh, but along with that there is a cost that comes and we see that in uh, in some of the parables and we're going through uh, this this tour of some of uh, the parables, Je parables Jesus told uh, of the kingdom and so we're looking to try and understand something afresh of the kingdom and uh, that's not an understanding that we're sort of striving for in our own strength, but actually it's something that Jesus is, is wanting to reveal to us as a church together, uh, an understanding of, uh, of the kingdom. And as we, uh, as we sort of push out, as Aggie sort of reminded us, as we're pushing out onto this a new horizon along paths of equipping, paths of encounter, we're spending time encountering Jesus uh, so that we can take his presence with us and others can encounter him. But also we're wanting to be equipped as individuals and as the church to uh, to know what we're talking about, to to know what it is that the kingdom is and to, to go in in the uh, revelation of that. So Dave is taking us on into uh, we're still in Matthew 13. This is a, a treasure trove of uh, of um, parables of the kingdom. Uh, but we're looking at uh, the mustard seed and the yeast in the leaven. And he actually threw in an extra bonus one from uh, the book of Mark uh, as well, just uh, to, that, that he felt really fitted in with what he was sharing. Good morning, Carterton. Sorry we can't be with you in person this morning. We're actually going to be in Wheatley uh, in Oxford and we need to be on Zoom with them. So I've had to record this beforehand. But it comes with our love and it comes in the hope that you are really, really enjoying this series on the Kingdom of God and learning so much from it. I was out walking this morning in the woods here in Freeland and it was a wonderful morning. It was nice and quiet, apart from the cuckoo. And looking at the deer in the field, and I suddenly realised something else walking around. I thought, do you know, wherever I go, I look for growth. I'm looking to see if the deer have grown. I'm looking to see if I can see the cuckoo and it's appeared. And will there be any young this year? I'm looking to see if the buds are starting to come on the trees. And then I got back home here and opposite our house is a, across the other side of the road. is a piece of land, a little bit of land, which is ours, against our neighbour's big hedge. And... Every time I walk back in to our little sort of courtyard area, I look and I see, are those daffodil bulbs and tulip bulbs 
coming through the ground. And I reflected on this and I thought, well, this is strange. This is to do with my upbringing. It's to do with the fact that my grandfather was a gardener and whenever I was at his house in, in the city of Manchester, he was growing roses and he'd explain to me what he was doing and why he put certain things on them and why he would prune them. And when we had our own house in Manchester, it wouldn't show up. Here I was, I was, I was given a piece of land by my dad when I was about 10 years of age. It, we, we didn't have a big garden. It was a long garden at the back. And it was a shorter garden at the front, but he gave me a section of the front garden. And he said, I want you to learn to grow things. And if you do a good job on that, you can have the section by the, the back door. And before I knew it, I had the section right the way down to where he had the vegetables. Because I learned through my parents how to grow things. And actually, I've learned that the kingdom of God is all about growth. And I'm always looking for growth. And it can be, be appear a little demanding at times. Because the people that you work with, you, you don't want to see them standing still. You want to see them growing. And there are five parables about growth uh, that are actually in, in the Bible, very clear parables about growth. And you've done the first uh, two or three already, uh, the seed uh, and, and the, the parable of the seed and the weeds. And I want to look today at the mustard seed, the leaven, and actually one extra one to, to what the two Johns first gave me, which is the farmer in the seal, which it was seed, which appears in Mark 4 and is very special um, scripture for me and has meant a tremendous amount in my own life to learn patience, to see the fruit of what's been planted come forth. Anyway, uh, I'll start to read to you from, uh, we're in Matthew's Gospel and I, I'll just read briefly, uh, first of all, the uh, the parable that's to do with the mustard seed. And it's verse 31 of uh, chapter 13. He put another parable before them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it's grown, it's larger than all the garden plants and it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. And I'll, re I'll read each parable as we go through. Now, this is a treasure chest of parables, Matthew 13. It contains uh, seven parables, all of which have secrets of the kingdom in them. And these are only ever clearly explained to his disciples. They're not explained to the crowd. The crowd wasn't expected to get them. They just heard nice little pictures. But the disciples' job was to understand them. And I like the way Jesus says at the end of Luke 24 that he opened his disciples' minds to understand the scriptures. And he does that by the Holy Spirit coming and helping us to see what's in there because it was the Holy Spirit that breathed those scriptures into being in the first place. So there are four things we see here about this kingdom of God strategy in this particular scripture. The first thing is it starts small and it starts insignificant. Never ever despise the day of small things. It always starts small if it's God, but it always ends up significant. The mustard seed, somebody once gave me a mustard seed. I lost it. It was careless of me, I know. But it was so tiny, you could barely see. It was a little black dot. And it, I got it between my fingers, it squeezed. And off it went, and I never did find it. And actually, the next time somebody gave it me, they, they gave it me with a piece of sellotape on it, so, so it didn't fly away. But that seed doesn't just represent the mustard seed, but it also represents the seed of the kingdom. And the seed of the kingdom is amazing. It contains the nature, the power, and the character, and the content of the life of the king. The nature, the power, the character, the content, and the life of the king. Now, I love to garden, and I have some vegetable boxes uh, in my garden. At front. Well, we have gardens at both sides of our house, not at the back or the front. And on both sides, we have these vegetable boxes. And one of the things we grow, amongst other things, is carrots. I am always absolutely enthralled. Every year, and I've got, I was thinking this morning, when can I get my carrots in? When can I get my carrots in? My onions are already in. I'll put carrots in the same box. And I think, right, okay, when can I get them in? But the amazing thing about carrots is this. They are a tiny torpedo-shaped probably about that size in between my fingers, sort of across here like that, very small, grey. And yet, when they come up, they're green on the top and orangey red underneath. 
How in the world does that happen? I am always amazed at that particular thing. A carrot seed fascinates me. And the reason is this. It happens because the power is in the seed. The DNA is in the seed. That seed, when planted, will not grow as an onion. It will grow as a carrot. It will be green fronds on top, orangey red underneath. My onions will be bulbous, they'll be white and slightly brown, and they'll be green on top. Totally different growing in the same bed. Amazing. Because that seed contains the nature of the carrot. The power when it grows to become a parrot. Carrot. Not a parrot, a carrot. And the content of a carrot. So when I eat it, when Chris has cooked it, wow, it tastes great because it actually tastes like it's been homegrown, not mass produced. And the life that's in it gives me energy. And it's the same in the kingdom of God. Second thing is this. First, it starts small and insignificant. The second thing is it starts covert, but it ends overt. It's always first hidden and then it's revealed second. Almost everything God does starts small. You think about this, almost everything that God does starts small. Bethlehem, Adullam, Ziklag, Hebron. Four important places. And a fifth, Jerusalem. Bethlehem, Adullam, Ziklag, Hebron, Jerusalem. Who's that about? That's the life of David. He started very small. Shepherd boy, Bethlehem, King, Jerusalem. What about this? Bethlehem. Egypt, Nazareth, Galilee, Jerusalem, from the stable to the cross and ultimate Lord and Saviour, Jesus. The kingdom always starts small and it always starts hidden. When men do things, they try to put them up so everyone can see them. Let's have a shard bigger than anything else. Let's have this building bigger than the shard. Let's have this building bigger than the bigger than the shard. That's how men think bigger, better, faster. God doesn't work that way. When man first wanted to build something, he built a tower called Babel. He built it with bricks instead of stones. So it was man-made rather than quarried. And he put bitumen in between instead of mortar so that when the sun came, things began to melt. God always is a building inspector. He'll always come to see what you're building. And I would suggest it's better to go down first than it is to go up. When you go down first, you get foundations. So the kingdom of God actually requires strong foundations. The third thing is this. The mustard seed is so incredible. It's disproportionate from its original seed to its remarkable growth into a tree. And actually, they can grow up to nine feet tall. Now, you might not think that's big compared to English trees, but in the Holy Land, the trees aren't very tall. I don't see many big trees out there but I see smaller trees. What you eventually see is not what you initially planted. When it's revealed, there's always an element of surprise. Now, during lockdown, I don't know how you've been. I mean, most of you have been working really hard. Those of you that are in the medical profession, I'd, I'd take my hat off to you, not that I've got one on today, but they actually uh, have done amazing work, but you're expected to do that work and care for your kids. I know some of you frontline workers have been able to put your children in school, but I'd be interested what, what your parents uh, say when they see your children. I, I saw Isaac the other day, Rebe Russell and Rebecca's uh, youngest, and I couldn't believe it. I, where has he got those legs from? He had suddenly looked like a giraffe. It was amazing. He'd shot. He's seven years of age. He just shot up. None of his clothes ever fit him normally anyway, because he's so slim. But I looked at him, I thought, my goodness me, he'll be as tall as me soon. People grow. And when they grow, it's a surprise. In fact, it's boring when your grandparents normally visit you. And the first thing they say when they come through the door is, wow, David, you've really grown. I used to think, what do you expect me to do? Just stand still? Now, as a disciple, I don't expect anybody to stand still. If they're rooted in Jesus and abiding in the vine, Growth is a natural element of our life. The fourth thing is it produces an end product, which results in a nesting place for the birds of the air in its branches. I absolutely 
love the variety of birds of the air that we get within the church. I always see the mustard seed as a church. We plant them small. Many of the churches that we work with started off in a house. I can think of one church that I work with in Nairobi that started off with 40 people in a tent. Can you believe it? And the tent kept collapsing. Whenever there was a rainstorm, down came the tent. Oh, they were miserable. They were cold. They didn't like being outside, but they were planting and it was exciting. Today, they have incredible stone buildings. They have a 5,000 seater auditorium with bulletproof and bombproof glass in the windows because they've been threatened on many occasions by the local Muslims. They have a school, a King's School, which has got 600 children in it and is one of the top 100 schools in the nation. They have got a youth facility that's massive. I am absolutely amazed at what they do. Their Sunday school has got over two and a half thousand children in it. Their, their, their youth meeting on a Sunday morning has 800 in it. And their auditorium, by the time we finish three services, has seen between 10 and 12,000 people pass through it. That is the surprise of the kingdom. There are swallows in there. There are sparrows in there. There are eagles in there. But the first thing we did was sow the seed. And I've been with them, not from the tent, but just after the tent when they got their first building. And the last 30, 34 years when I've been working with them, I have seen remarkable progress at what God has done in that church. It's the best development from a mustard seed that I've ever seen. This picture of the mustard seed uh, and the prophetic word of the tree is about your future and the future of your church. What's planted small will grow. Give it time. Be patient. Give it the right nutrients. I read something the other day. I'm going to have to find it because it's a quote. I, I've, I've got it written down here. And someone has defined the mustard seed as subversive, scandalous, as an element in this parable. It's subversive and scandalous. That's what it's described as. It's the, in that the fast growing nature of the mustard plant makes it a malignant weed with dangerous takeover properties. I like that. <laughs> it needs a government, a kingdom of God, health warning. This is a malignant weed with dangerous takeover properties. Pliny the Elder, in his natural history, published around AD 78, I was not there to see him write it, but I've, I've, I've read quotes from it, writes, that mustard is extremely beneficial for the health. It grows entirely wild, though it's improved by being transplanted. But on the other hand, when it's been sown, it's scarcely possible to get the place free of it as the seed, when it falls, germinates at once. Hallelujah. So what do we do? We plant all over Carterton. We plant every house that you have should be a potential plant. Every job that you work in is a potential plant. It's a place for a mustard seed to grow. I, I remember when I was teaching at Gateway County Primary School, one of the things that I got the joy of doing was to pray for the sick on our staff. And our teachers would come and, and I, I taught in a parallel class with a girl who had breast cancer. She was not a believer. We laid hands on her. We prayed for her. We'd fasted for her. And miraculously, God healed her, totally set free from it. No trace of it whatsoever on the x-rays. I sat down with her afterwards and said, now you've seen what Jesus can do for you. Would you like to give your life to him? She said, I'll think about it. I don't know how much longer she thought about it, because within a year, I'd moved out to pastor the church in Whitney. But I took you something. We grew a mustard tree in that place. When I left... Some of the parents, RAF parents, came to see me and said, who's going to care for our children? One actually used this term, who is going to shepherd our children now you've gone? And I explained to them that was their job. They'd had the children. It was their job and privilege to look after them. So there you go. That's one, one wonderful thing. The mustard seed where the birds of the air come and make their home. Could we do this as a church in Carterton? Could we become a mustard seed that's grown into a tree? where many birds of the air can come and make their home in him. The next parable is this. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till all was leavened. And I have a confession to make here. Making bread is not exactly the highlight of my life, but I love bread. 
And when I was at grammar school in Manchester, we had a boys' cookery class. And in that cookery class, one of the things we made, one of the first things we made was bread. I loved the smell of bread. My mum used to make bread. My grandmother made bread. My wife makes bread. My daughters make bread. I love going into a house with the smell of bread. But there's a temptation that goes with the smell of bread. And that temptation was in my bag as I was riding home on my bicycle from my boys' cookery class in my grammar school. And the mile, two mile ride home, after about half a mile, I succumbed. I stopped and I started to eat that bread. I didn't need butter, it was fresh. It was wonderful. I ate the bread, rode a bit more, stopped, ate the bread, rode a bit more, stopped, stopped, stopped. And when I got home, there were only crumbs left in my bag. My mother was not too pleased with me, but there you go, a little leaven in the lump can work away and that's exactly what it does it's hidden it has an inner force it's wholesome it changes it pervades everything it brings about perfection it brings about God's ultimate purpose in man when a son or daughter of the kingdom gets into a situation that situation will change as you work away in it it will change if there's unrighteousness going on within that company light starts to come in leaven starts to come in and the thing starts to change uh, one of our brothers found a lot of theft going on in the company that he was a salesman for. The salesmen were falsifying their uh, accounts when they were traveling. He couldn't do it. And so he put his account in and they begged him, don't do it, don't do it, because we'll all have to do what you do if that happens. You do what we do. And he said, I can't do that. It's not the right thing to do. And he put his expense account in and he made it clear that he was just claiming for what he'd actually had and the facilities that he'd used. And then they began questioning the other people in the company. Well, why is yours so high when his is so low? Amazingly, he was asked to leave the company. Probably because the bosses were fiddling as well. But that little leaven worked away in that context till the whole lump was beginning to ferment and move. Are we a little leaven? wherever we are is the power of the spirit of god in us that leaven quality which is growing and developing whatever is behind us and around us and whatever we're within is the kingdom of god now within me to such an extent not that i become a pharisee in front of everybody but actually because of the way i conduct myself things change stealing stops honesty starts to come Covetousness stops. There are no thoughts of adultery or immorality in the workplace where we are. Some of you will remember Brim Franklin. Others of you may even remember Yaya and Davis. But those two used to work on the line at Cowley. And when they, when they were on the line, the other men did not like them working on their line. Because while the other men were reading pornography, Brin and Yaya were reading their Bibles and talking to one another about what was in there. And in the end, the men begged them to stop. And one day production stopped on their line because there was such controversy. They said, you make us feel uncomfortable in what we're doing. And they just smiled and they said, you've got wives, you've got sisters. Think about that. You've got mothers. Think about that. And they changed the atmosphere on their line. I really admired those two men. They made a big difference in a very dangerous and difficult situation. The third parable I'm throwing in as a, as a bonus ball, if you like, for you. I'll just read it to you from Matthew 4. It's a wonderful, wonderful parable, very short. Matthew 4, verse 26, the parable of the seed growing. And he said to them, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and he rises night and day. And the seed sprouts and grows, and he doesn't know how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn will appear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Oh, I love this. I just love this. I, do you know, I, every, as I said, every day I go and have a look to see if my balls are coming through in the grass. Opposite the window where Chris stands when she's in the kitchen or I stand when I'm doing the washing up. And we look out 
and I planted them there so she has something beautiful to look at as she's working or I've got something beautiful to look at when I'm working there or when we're working together as we often do and I watch them coming through the earth there's nothing like seeing that first blade and now our daffodils several of them have got very compacted slightly yellow heads and in a week or two they're going to open right out into that beautiful trumpet shape and for several weeks we will have daffodils, narcissi, tulips, snowdrops, uh, hyacinth bulbs all in that area and the colour will be wonderful. That's the kingdom of God. You see what is sown in you John Gridley was telling you the other day when the seed goes into soil that's been well worked the soil will produce a great crop and everything that comes up will be different that's why everybody needs to grow we need complete variety in the body of Christ we don't want everybody like me we want a variety of the gifts and graces that God has put within the church every one of you has been sown an important seed that's why we have to help you work on the seed of the soil of your heart so it's tender, so it's soft, so it's pliable, so that the sun can get at it and the rain can get at it, so it can be formed and so its beauty can be admired by other people. This is a very special parallel. But here's the thing. Sometimes we can want everything to change just like that, like this COVID crisis. Actually, things take time. Growth takes time. And that farmer is a patient farmer. And it's a picture of the Lord Jesus. He's patient with you. I know that because he's been very patient with me. He only has to be patient with you. With me, he had to be very, very patient. Once you learn how to become obedient, once you learn how to become a receptacle, receptacle for the seed of the kingdom, once you learn to sit and listen for instructions rather than do your own thing once you learn to live according to his word growth starts to come the last thing i want to say to you is this that parable of the sower and the seed is so important it's the key parable the bible says if you don't understand this you don't understand anything in there he talks about the birds of the air coming and they come to snatch something they don't come to snatch you. They come to snatch the seed. And the seed, the Bible says, is the word of the kingdom. Whatever the king of the kingdom has said to you through prophecy, through scripture, through prayer over you, or directly through reading the word as you've been studying the word of God in your daily devotions, do not let the birds of the air steal from you otherwise the growth won't occur because the power the nature the purpose and the life of the king are in the seed that's being sown in you god bless you look forward to being with you again next month and may this series be more than something you listen to may it be something that's life-changing for you as it's been life-changing for me god bless you in carterton Fantastic. Uh, wasn't that excellent? <laughs> That's the second time I've listened through to that and I got uh, a whole load more stuff out of it. So I would really encourage you to go back again this week, listen through, uh, watch through uh, Dave sharing and uh, just uh, bringing to life those those words. I just want to draw out a couple of things before we finish in, uh, in worship. Uh, he was talking about the mustard seed and how things that start small... Uh, end up con significant the, the seed of the kingdom starts small in us but ends significantly and uh, used a picture of Jesus there uh, from Bethlehem to Jerusalem also using that uh, picture of the seed as, uh, as a picture for the future of the church um, that's why we use uh, language like planting churches 
because these things start small. Uh, you know, our, our church here was was something small uh, 10, 10, 12 years ago, and uh, is grown and is growing. And uh, there's more for us to see in that in the future here. Uh, and uh, finally, the 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 in that last uh, parable in Mark four, he was talking about how it takes time. Uh, which just brings us back to for, to what John was uh, sharing last week about uh, patiently waiting on the Lord and waiting for uh, for Him and not to forget His promises. When uh, when God speaks, He speaks for purpose. We are going to uh, sing uh, a song, a prayer. to close and uh, then we'll uh, move into our breakout rooms let's sing together come set your rule and reign in our hearts again increase in us we pray unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze in hope Like wildfire in our very soul Holy Spirit, come invade us now Sing, come set Come set your rule and reign In our hearts again Increase in us, we pray Set our hearts ablaze in full Like wildfire in our very soul Holy Spirit, come invade us now Ah, the church, we need your power Seek your kingdom first Hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize. To see the captive's heart released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. Ah, the church. Your power, build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fill. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts you made us for much more than this await the kingdom seed in us fill us with the strength and love of Christ we are the church we need your power Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fill. Show your mighty hand, fill our streets and set your church on fire. Win this nation, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom.
your kingdom come, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing heart. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us, fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are the church. We need your power. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, fill our streets and land. Let your church on fire, win the nation's back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom. Father God, that is our prayer this morning, is that we see your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. And God, we want to pray that uh, for ourselves, Lord God. Would your kingdom come? Would you build your kingdom in here, in, in our hearts, Lord God? But would you be building your kingdom here in this town and in our streets and in our homes and in our, uh, in our county, Lord God? We want to pray that your kingdom would come powerfully here, Lord. And would you be building your kingdom here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, that was just so exciting, this, to hear your uh, explain, Lord, about uh, the seed that grows, uh, and Lord, and your commitment to our growth. That was just wonderful. And Lord, we just, just want to echo what John's has prayed. Let your kingdom come in our yes. hearts, Lord, afresh, in our town, Lord. Let it grow, we pray. Thank you, Lord.